Hello STEM students, good day. It's time to set your mind to learning mode. I am Mom Sharon and I will be with you as we explore the world of physics. This is Puerto Princesa City Dream TV. <music> to learn physics and a pen and a notebook on hand is a good start are you now ready for our lesson this week i will take that as a yes so let's start at the end of this lesson we will be able to deal with the conversion of units and scientific notation for your first task here are the five questions for, you to for each item Choose and write the letter of your answer in your notebook. Anna is 165 centimeters tall and weighs 50 to 1,000 grams. Express her height in inches and her weight in pounds, respectively. Letter A, 121.12 inches and 163.32 pounds. Letter B, 104.11 inches and 142.44 pounds. Letter C, 87.93 inches and 127.28 pounds. And letter D, 64.96 inches and 114.66 pounds. And the answer is letter D. A rocket launched from the surface of the Earth needs a speed of at least 7.9 kilometers per second in order to reach the space. This speed is called the orbital velocity. Convert this rocket launching speed to miles per hour. Letter A. 17,675.57 miles per hour. Letter B, 22,348.46 miles per hour. Letter C, 31,587.01 miles per hour. And letter D, 37,565.44 miles per hour. And the answer is letter A. The ISA or International Standard Atmosphere states that the density of air is 1.225 kilograms per cubic meters at sea level at 15.0 degrees Celsius. Convert this density to gram per cubic centimeters. Letter A. 4.06 times 10 raised to negative 3 grams per cubic centimeters. Letter B, 2.03 times 10 raised to negative 3 grams per cubic centimeters. Letter C, 1.225 times 10 raised to negative 3 grams per cubic centimeters. And letter D, 1.002 times 10 raised to negative 3 grams per cubic centimeters. And the answer is letter C. Most 
recent estimate of the number of cells in the average human body is around 30 trillion. If there are almost 8 billion human beings on the planet, how many cells are there in all? Letter A, 2.4 times 10 raised to 21 cells. Letter B, 2.4 times 10 raised to 22 cells. Letter C, 2.4 times 10 raised to 23 cells. And letter D, 2.4 times 10 raised to 24 cells. And the answer is letter C. Express 3.14 atometer in scientific notation. Letter A, 3.14 times 10 raised to negative 18. Letter B, 3.14 times 10 raised to negative 21. Letter C, 3.14 times 10 raised to negative 24. And letter D, 3.14 times 10 raised to negative 25. And the answer is letter A. How's your score? Did you get all the items correct? If yes, that's very good. If no, don't worry. It's just a pretest. You still have a chance to improve your score at the end of this episode. So, STEM learners, pay attention as we go through our lesson. Do you know or do you remember the story of Noah and his ark? When God asked him to build an ark, he used a cubit as a measure of length. A cubit is the distance from an adult's elbow to the tip of the middle finger. But human bodies differ in sizes, and so is the length of every person's arm. So, a cubit using my arm may differ from a cubit measured by another person bigger or smaller than I am. Luckily, nowadays, we already have PSI units, or the International System of Units, wherein standard units of measurement are established and recognized internationally. And in this lesson, you will be solving measurement problems involving conversion of units and expressing measurements in scientific notation. Let's just recall some important concepts, such as the exponential form of unit prefixes, and some conversion factors that will be used in the lesson. As mentioned earlier, you will be required to write your final answers as you convert units in scientific notation. What then is scientific notation? Scientific notation is the easiest way of expressing very large and very small numbers. Here are some reminders in writing scientific notation. The number in scientific notation is expressed as the product of an integral power of 10. The number is equal to or greater than 1 but less than 10. The decimal point is placed to the right of the first non-zero digit. The exponent of 10 represents the number of places the decimal point is moved. The negative exponent indicates that the decimal point was moved to the right. The positive exponent tells that the decimal point was moved to the left. Example, the value of 1,910 becomes 1.0 times 10 raised to the power of 6 
by moving the decimal point six places to the left. Another example, the value of 0 0.00015 becomes 1.5 times 10 raised to the negative power of 4 by moving the decimal point four places to the right. It's conversion time. For our first example, we are going to convert feet to meter. Write down the given magnitude over 1, and that is 9.5 feet over 1. Multiply the given magnitude with the unit conversion factor. In this example, we choose from the list of conversion factors for length, and we have 1.00 meter is equivalent to 3.281 feet. In writing the equation, remember to put the same unit at opposite position for cancellation. Then, proceed to the operation. 9.50 times 1 equals 9.50, and 1 times 3.281 equals 3.281. When the unit feet is cancelled, the only unit left is meter. It means that you have successfully converted feet to meter. At this point, divide the numerator by the denominator, and that is 9.50 divided by 3.281, giving us 2.90. Therefore, 9.50 feet is 2.90 meters. And this is how we convert feet to yard. To convert 9.5 feet to yard, first, we write down the given magnitude over 1, and that is 9.5 feet over 1. Then, from the list of conversion factors for length, we determine the unit conversion factor to use. In this case, we have 1 yard equals 3 feet. Now, we multiply the given magnitude with the unit conversion factor. In writing the equation, again, remember to put the same unit at opposite position for cancellation. So 9.50 times 1 equals 9.50, and 1 times 3 equals 3. When the unit feet is cancelled, the only unit left is yard. It means that you have successfully converted feet to yard. And now, we divide 9.50 by 3, yielding 3.17. Therefore, 9.50 feet is 2.17 yards. Next in line, converting meter per second to mile per hour. For this example, we write down the given magnitude separating the units at the numerator and denominator. That is, 28 meters per second. This means that the object is traveling 28 meters for every one second. To convert 28 meters per second to miles per hour, we need to determine the appropriate conversion factors, and these are 1 mile equals 1.609 kilometer equals 1609 meters, and 1 hour equals 3600 seconds. With the identified conversion factors, we now write the equation, putting the same units at opposite position for cancellation. And now we have 28 times 1 times 3,600 equals 100,800. And 1 times 1,609 times 1 equals 1,609. When the unit meter and second are cancelled, the only units left are mile and r. And this means that the conversion is successful. Then, we divide 100,800 by 1,609 
to yield 62.65. Therefore, 28 meters per second is equivalent to 62.65 miles per hour. Let us also convert square feet to square meter. Write down the given magnitude over 1. That is, 880.00 square feet over 1. To proceed to the conversion process, we first determine the unit conversion factor to use. In this case, we are going to use 1 meter equals 3.281 feet. Then, we need to multiply each value by itself to get the square. And that is, 1 times 1 equals 1 square meter. And 3.281 feet times 3.281 feet equals 10.76 square feet. Therefore, 1 square meter is equivalent to 10.76 square feet. And now, we write the equation, putting the same units at the opposite position. So we have 880.00 times 1.00 equals 880.00 and 1 times 10.76 equals 10.76. Then, we cancel out square feet with the only remaining unit and that is square meters. Dividing 880.00 by 10.76 will give us 81.78. Therefore, 880.00 square feet is equivalent to 81.78 square meters. How about nanometers to centimeters? Here is how it's done. We know that the prefix nano has the exponential power of negative 9. Therefore, 3.7 nanometers is equivalent to 3.7 times 10 raised to negative 9 meters. So, we write down the given value over 1. And that is, 3.7 times 10 raised to negative 9 meters over 1. For this one, the unit conversion factor is 1 meter equals 100 centimeters. Then, we write the equation. Then, proceed to multiplication process. 3.7 times 10 raised to negative 9 times 100 equals 3.7 times 10 raised to negative 7. And 1 times 1 equals 1. At this point, we divide 3.7 times 10 raised to negative 7 by 1. Therefore, 3.7 nanometers is equivalent to 3.7 times 10 raised to negative 7 centimeters. Now, let us see how well you understand our lesson. Determine to which quantity each conversion factor belongs. Choices are length, mass, time. Write your answer in your notebook. Number 1. 1 kilogram equals 2.205 pounds. Number 2. 1 mile equals 1.609 kilometer. Number 3. 1 day equals 86,400 seconds. Number 4, 1 gram equals 6.85 times 10 raised to negative 5 slug. Number 5, 1 cubit equals 18 inches. The answers are mass, length, time, mass, length. How's your score? I hope you got a high one. Let's have another activity for you to accomplish.
solve the following measurement problems in your notebook. Present your answer in sentence form under the column of conclusion. The first one is done for you. Noah's Ark is 300.00 cubits long, 50.00 cubits wide, and 30.00 cubits high, according to the Bible. What is its volume in cubic meter? The volume of Noah's Ark is 4.3 times 10 raised to 4 cubic meters. The tallest peak in Palawan is Mount Mantalingahan, found in the southern part of the province, with a height of 2,085 meters above sea level and is considered sacred by the indigenous people of Palawan. The Amdam Deep in the Philippine Trench is the third deepest point on Earth, measuring to 10,400 meters. If Mount Mantalingahan were submerged at this location, how much deep of water would cover it over in yards? Mount Mantalingahan will be covered by 9.09 .09 times 10 raised to 3 yards depth of water. The density of diamond is 3.51 grams per cubic centimeters. What is this value in kilograms per cubic meter? Three point fifty one grams per cubic centimeters is three point fifty one times ten raised to three kilograms per cubic meters. At this point, you have learned how to convert measurements from one unit to another. And always remember the scientific notation is a convenient way if you were to write very big or very small numbers. My dear students, as we end our episode, we need to test your skills if we really have attained our learning objectives. Let us now have a five item test. For each item, write the letter of your answer in your notebook.
Congratulations, grade 12 STEM students. You were able to finish the task in this lesson. If you have questions, your teacher is just a message or a text away. Once again, I am Mom Sharon. See you next episode for another learning opportunity as we explore the world of physics. Only here on Puerto Princesa City, Dream TV.